few weeks ago, I discussed this project, The Scandinavian Front, over YouTube with the Novel Air Simulation Team. This led to them inviting me to their headquarters in Gävle. Here we could find their office, filled with pilot helmets, books and pictures, but it wasn't why I was there. Instead, this is what piqued my interest from their videos. It is a J35J Draken simulator, based off the J version Draken U131. All the buttons within the cockpit fills the designated function. If you for example wish to choose weapons, fire them, check gear, or adjust your speed, this is all done inside the cockpit. For me, who is rather long, getting into the aircraft was a little bit of a problem, but I adjusted quickly enough. The suit they used to simulate the G movements of the aircraft did however not fit me, but it was an interesting experience nonetheless. Before takeoff, I was guided up in the air by one of their instructors. Here, he takes me through the startup sequence and all the things I need to know to successfully take off the aircraft. The airstrip is Field 58. It's located in Björkvik, outside New Schöping. As a kid, I spent my summers in the area, and I remember my father telling me there was a fighter base in the neighborhood. However, I never believed him. Taking off into J-35 is a straightforward matter. You only need enough speed for the airframe to lift off the ground. Once airborne, you are required to stay above a certain speed to avoid stall. After the canopy was closed, the experience was even more interesting. My only contact with the outside world consisted of the screens and the radio communication link with the controller. Now I also got the chance to try out the weapons. Here, I am taking the Draken for a gun run. Other weapons in the simulator included the Robot 24 Sidewinder, as well as the Yachtrakit Capsule M57. This knob controls the weapon selection. Here, you can see me turning the weapon to inactive mode. But all good things must come to an end, 
and it was time for me to take the aircraft down on the ground again. For an aircraft who is built around maintaining a certain speed, this is just about as tricky as it sounds. My second attempt made me do a very blatant pilot error and accidentally pull the brake chute instead of lowering my landing gear. The result was very predictable and very deadly. The by far most interesting feature in the simulator was the replication of the stall warning system. The stall warning system is pretty much like having your finger slapped by the joystick. It's a little bit annoying, but it's also a good way for you to know that you're doing something terribly, terribly wrong. As you can see, this landing is a little bit better than my second one turned out to be. The only real issue I encountered during this landing was during taxi when I strayed several times upon the grass. Furthermore, while parking the aircraft, I managed to damage the wing upon the parking tiller. Overall, the entire experience was very fun and educating, and it will surely come in handy as we work on the J-45 in the Scandinavian front. A big thanks to Novel Air for the invitation, and Johan for the flight instruction and answering the questions I had. And for all you others who have been watching this, thank you and see you next time!